Hey everyone, welcome to Draw Anime Academy. My name is Christina, and in this video, we are going to be going over a very simple and easy proportional method for beginners that will really skyrocket your figure drawings. So I'm sure a lot of beginners are very familiar with this, where you go to the library and you get an anime, a how to draw anime book, and they open to the anatomy and figure drawing section, and you see this method, where it's a figure with eight heads, and there's a graph, and then there's a figure that's stuck in this graph. This is not a bad method, right? I and mean, I'm just going to preface this, that um, this isn't really to bash this method. I just think personally that this way of drawing the figure is kind of not very flexible. Um, obviously, you know, this is a good visual representation of how the figure looks, right? You know, you have the head and you have, you know, this graph. It's very simple. Uh, but when the more... I find that the more you try and um, draw people using this method, the more it starts getting a bit convoluted. And the reason is because it's very vague. Um, no two no two people are the same. People have different head shapes. People have different head sizes, right? And not only that, but people have different proportional method, proportional sizes. And so it's very hard to squish, the, you know, a, an average person into this method. And instead, what I'm going to be teaching you is a more efficient method that can just be started as a base. And I also want to say that no figure system is very accurate. Um, you know, you can you can basically try any kind of method that would work. The only thing is, is that there's always going to be some little thing that, you know, is not the most accurate. Uh, I would say the best way is the easiest way. And I'm just going to be showing you that now. And this is a method that is taught by Will Weston. I'm sure the other teachers have taught this as well, but this is mainly something that I've learned from Will Weston's classes. He's an amazing figure drawing teacher and just an artist in general. And I think he likes it when other people teach his methods. So I'm not scared of him chasing after me. I don't really care. Uh, but anyways, so I'm going to be showing you this method that will really knock your socks off. And I hope you guys enjoy. So this proportion method is going to go over two things. Division marks, hand lengths, and some, actually three things, head lengths. Now, head lengths isn't necessarily like using this graph here. It's more of just as like a base, right? So I want you guys to start off with one line. It doesn't really matter how long, you know. Uh, it, you know, you can make it super short. You can make it super long. The most important thing is the division method. So I'm just going to be drawing one line start to the, you know, start to finish. I'll put it in the middle here and this can work for both male and female i'm just doing female because one it's easier for me and two you can always just kind of tweak things right but not only that but a lot there's a uh, anime culture in general just is very female focused right you in in some bad animes or a lot of bad animes uh the guy's always very average and the guy and the girls have a lot more variety so that's why i'm doing girls um also because of my bias right um all right so we have this first line here once again doesn't matter how long it is then you're going to divide this in half. If you're having trouble with dividing this in half, what you can do is you can shorten this and say, okay, that's the halfway point. And then you can just duplicate it. Right? And then that's your halfway point. And it makes it a little bit more accurate. Then you're going to divide these two in half. And kind of rough, roughly estimate. This will help with, you know, training your eye to know how to split things and in different proportions, right? Like 20, 30, oh no, no, sorry, 20, 80, you know, 70, 30, yada, yada, um, which we'll probably go over at a different kind of video. So this is your starting point. Then you're going to divide this in half. And this is your head, right? So that's kind of like your little head length. Here from the middle is your pelvis. Halfway from that is your nipples, which are technically floating because, you know, people have different bust sizes and whatnot. But this is kind of like a general overview. This is the pillar of the knee. Which is kind of like where you're around where your kneecaps are. And then your feet. So this is basically structured on the eight heads method. However, this is just a starting point, as I mentioned earlier. You can always change different sizes, especially to fit it in the more anime kind of Portion, right? A lot of the time, uh, the proportions will be mostly the same, except the heads may be a bit, little bit bigger. And I will be showing you guys that um, in a little bit. So now that we have that out of the way, I'm actually going to separate this because it's kind of I'm going to be drawing over this anyway. 
Now I'm going to be talking uh, about hand lengths. I'm going to put this to the side here. Actually, I'm going to put this all the way here instead. Now I'm going to be talking about hand lengths, and I'm just going to be marking this in red. Now I tend to kind of forget that I'm marking everything in red. So when it comes to the head proportion, uh, your eye line for realistic, uh, for realistic proportions is halfway from the top of your head to the bottom of your head. Halfway between that is your nose line. So this is the eye line, this is the nose line halfway between. So it's very simple. Now, this may take a little bit of time to get used to. It took me some time to get used to as well when I learned this method. And the reason why is just because you just have to have a little bit of a change in mindset, right? But once you memorize this, your figures are going to look a lot better. Anyways, so here, from the top of the head to the bottom of the nose, which is the nose line here, is one hand length. And we're going to be using this approximate method or approximate length to scatter, you know, across the body and find different lengths or uh, measurements. So the first one is the size, uh, sorry, the pit of the neck, which is where your clavicle starts, which is your collarbone. Start from the bottom of the nose. One hand length approximately is the pit of the neck. One hand length across on both sides is the clavicle. Now you can also test this out for yourself. You can put a hand, you know, from the start of your collarbone and reach all the way to your shoulder and it's about actually hand length. For me it is at least. Now your shoulders may be wider or smaller, but generally the average size, well my size is, you know, one hand length each side. Then you're going to go one hand length down. This is your sternum, which is the bottom of kind of like the hard part, the middle part of your rib cage. For girls, you know, uh, try uh, for girls, since I'm doing a female figure, um, keep the clavicle line a little bit more straight. For guys, it tends to be more angular, right? But that's for another video. Um, here, one hand length across, a little bit more narrow, is the rib cage. Now, for guys, the rib cage tends to be a little bit wider. It's more of like a 90 degree angle. For girls, it's more of like a 60 degree angle, uh, which tends to make that more like kind of hourglass looking figure. And that is where I would stop the hand lengths, you know, from the upper, the hand lengths are more for the upper body. So now we can go ahead and draw underneath. This is the opening of your, of your rib cage. Drag it down. And that's your rib cage. And then down here, this is where your pelvis is going to be. Now, this is also a very simple way of doing things as well. You know, I may have actually put the rib cage just a little bit too high, uh, too low. So I'm going to shorten this a little bit more. There, that's probably a little bit better. And the reason why I'm doing this is because there's another proportional method that you guys can learn on drawing rib cages and pelvises. So another benefit to this is that you can kind of start anywhere and reverse engineer it, right? You can start off with just the pelvis and the rib cage. And the reason is because you can divide this in half and have two boxes. Um, now the width and the height is relative, right? It just depends on your division and your proportional method. But generally I would say, you know, ha use the hand lengths to kind of guide your way around. Divide this in half. This is the three finger gap. And the three finger gap is basically like the distance between where your leg starts and kind of where your pelvis starts. So the leg doesn't necessarily start, you know, directly at where the pelvis starts. It actually starts a little bit towards the bottom, it starts out here. That's the three finger gap. Then down here, this is the, uh, let me actually, one half. This is the pelvis pubic bone area. Then the rib cage, I would actually make this a little bit thinner because it's a girl. Then you can basically say, okay, you know, you have the opening of the rib cage. One hand down approximately is about here. One hand down here and here. That is your rib cage. And basically rib cage fits into one box. So that makes it very easy. And the pelvis starts at the bottom half of the box. Then you can connect these two and where, voila, you have like a female waist. 
then you can you know kind of block in your uh, anatomy and whatnot uh, which I will go through in a little bit but actually I might as well just do the basics right now uh, you know this is kind of like where your abs are for the girls it's more hourglass shape so it has a little bit of a fat pad and gets a little bit wider down here but anyways that's something very simple here's the pecs pecs are a little bit above the sternum but the breasts tend to come out a little bit lower and if you look at uh, figure drawings or even just beach models, you'll, you'll tend to see the bottom of the rib cage opening down below the breasts. And that actually makes it very simple to memorize. So now we can go ahead and actually uh, translate this method over. So here, you know, approximately, it's about one, uh, one box. Divide this in half, three finger gap. Go down here, and that's the pelvis. Now, for girls, um, I would actually widen this area this is more of like a masculine or, or male body type i would actually instead enlarge this just a little bit more or just widen it the reason is because girls have wider hips most of the time even those who are more androgynous looking also tend to have some form of hips right it's just very subtle then you can connect the two like that now, I might even just make the ribcage just a little bit more slim, but we'll go with this for now. So now we can go ahead and continue with the legs. Now, the pillar of the knee, I believe, is probably the top or the bottom. I'm going to go check real quick. Okay, so it's the bottom. So here, you can just draw a little trapezoid. Now, the pillar, or sorry, the top of the knee to the pillar of the knee is about roughly half of the head size. So if you were to just put it over here, it'd be about this, this, this high. Okay, let me go back. And then we can just duplicate that and put it right here. So that is the, the knee, the pillar of the knee, and as well as the top of the knee already blocked out. Here we can add in the femur, which is about the length of the uh, the pelvis, or if not, a little bit more for women, because we have more of like a Y shape. For guys, it's a little bit straighter. I would have it poking out a little bit more here. Then start from the femur down to the pillow of the knee, and you have the legs. And down here, we have the base of the feet, and that's about a third of the head instead. So about up to the nose here. But it's a, you know, it's a, it's a rough estimate. And draw in the legs, or the bottom half of the legs, and you're mostly done. So now, we're going to get to the fun part, which is the arms. So a lot of people confuse, you know, how are the arms positioned, right? You know, people think, oh, it's down, you know, here. Some people think it's down up here. Well, we have a method for that as well, which is find the belly button, which is about roughly a little bit above the... Pubic, uh, the, the pubic bone area or the pelvis. You want to swing that out on both sides and then swing out from the pelvis as well or the bottom of the pubic bone as well. And then you can use that as a marker. So this might be a little bit too low, but either way, it doesn't really matter. Here is the elbow. Here is the wrist, the start of the wrist. And then here's the hand. And the hand, as you already mentioned, is that around that size. And you can just basically estimate that. And that is basically your uh, very simple proportional method. I'm going to separate this real quick before I do, before I clean this up a little bit more. So what I'm actually going to do right now is I'm going to thin out or kind of narrow down the rib cage here a little bit. It looks, just this part here, looks a little bit too, too, too thick. So I'm just going to narrow that down, and that looks a little bit better. Now what we can do is we can add a little bit of anatomy on top, because we have some time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to duplicate. Let me see this. It's not the right layer. I'm going to duplicate all this, merge it. And now I'm going to lower the opacity. Whoops. Come on. Just so it makes it easier for me to do. So here we have the head. This is for realistic proportion for now. Here for the neck, 
This actually may be a little bit tall, but we can always change things, right? We don't have to, this doesn't always have to be correct on the first try. So the neck is very slender. Uh, for, for guys, you know, you want to angle this down more, but for girls, you want to slope it. And this is just more of like subtle differences between female and male bodies. The clavicle, you can start off from here. And then you have the shoulders. And here, I like to start triangulating the body a little bit. So here are the pecs, and they basically start and end up to around the nipple area. Or maybe just a little bit higher than that, because it's the girls, so um, the breasts would kind of drop a little bit. But the pecs kind of have this like trapezoidal diamond shape, trapezoid shape actually. Um, and for the breasts, they actually droop down a little bit more, and they're more like teardrop shapes. So that they're not, you know, like bowling balls like this, right? You don't want to draw that. You want to start thin and droop them down. And of course, every girl's bust size is different. Uh, for animes, for anime girls, some people like them very humongous, <laughs> and some like them just kind of more flat. But a lot of the time, it's funny because in anime, and I'm going to keep this short, uh, bust size actually plays a lot into the character, right? It actually matters a lot for the character type. Um, but anyways... So here, we want to droop this down. And if you want, you can even have wrapping lines just to show the 3D form, right? And then I'm going to be drawing in the rib cage, which kind of fans out a little bit. And then imply the abs. Now, I'm not going to go too in-depth with the anatomy. I'm just putting in so it looks more full, right? It looks more like a figure. For girls, we have a double bump, so there's a bump coming out from the pelvis because we have more fat and there's a double bump coming out from the femur here's the pelvis and here is the abs now the abs tend to have a little bit more of a hourglass shape and that accentuates the figure of the female body here we have the upper leg, which tends to look like a drumstick, and then divide that in half, or starting from the pelvis and divide that downward, is where the satorius is. And I'm only going to be doing one leg here for now, um, because it'll look weird if I put two of the, actually maybe not, but I'm, anyways, going to add in the kneecap, the calves, and then the feet. The feet tend to have, um, the ankle tends to go a little bit higher on the inside than the outside. So I think I'll just do one side for that, of that for now. And then I'm going to be drawing the arm, which I'm just going to widen it around the elbow area. And we have the hand. You know, can I duplicate this on the other side? Yes, I can. In fact, I will for, actually, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be drawing in the other side here. But just more of like a simplified version, just so you guys can see for reference. Same thing here. So that is just the basic proportion for the female body and for the male body. Uh, because, you know, it's basically following the same thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this and animify it because, you know, this is in how to draw anime course, right? Or a uh, channel. And I want to relate it to anime because some people might confuse this being like, okay, well, this doesn't really apply to me because this is realistic. It's not really, um, it's not necessarily anime. Well, th that's not necessarily true because anime is based off of real life and therefore, you know, it won't, wouldn't be anime if you didn't just tweak it a little bit. It's just a stylized way of anatomy. So I would go ahead and actually, let me see if I can duplicate this. You know what? I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to go quick with this, though. So you start with off with a head. For girls, you might want to make the heads just a little bit larger. And make the head just a little bit shorter. But we want to go with, with the same method here. So we're going to divide this in half. Find the eye line, which is typically a little bit lower in comparison to real life, and find the nose line. 
Then we can take this, you know, the, this uh, rough hand length here, and start constructing the body. Now, the good thing about this is that you can always construct this um, in, you know, wherever you want. You know, you can start off with the with a base, starting with the rib cage, and then just construct this based on the proportional method, right? Divide this in half. That's your pelvis, and there you have a figure or the top half of the figure and all that stuff. But we're starting with the head for now. So here we have hand links. Hand links for girls are a little bit smaller in anime. And not only that, but they it's uh, very common to make the shoulders just a little bit smaller or the head is bigger in comparison, right? So here, one hand length down, one hand length down on both sides of the rib cage. And then we can kind of roughly block out the box method here. So we can you know, take this length, drop it down, And that will be the pelvis. Now the pelvis will be a little bit wider as well if you want to make a very curvy kind of character. But we're going to go for more of like a kind of average teenager look. So it's not super thick. And for me, I personally like to curve this downward just to make it a little bit easier for myself. And add in the three finger gap here. Once again, these are all proportional and and it's uh, and it's um what's that word called? Um, subjective. Uh, you know, some people can have longer torsos, some people can, can have shorter torsos, right? It all depends on your character. Divide this in half. They tend to, uh, anime tends to make the arms a little bit shorter as well, but we can basically estimate where it's going to be. So I would say, you know, belly button, swing out, maybe a little bit higher pelvis swing out and for this case you know I would actually shorten the arms just a little bit more because it's, it tends to make it a little bit more cutie, cutesy. Then we can take you know the bottom half from the uh, pelvis downward kind of measure it a little bit. Let's see here one two maybe a little bit lower than that. You can always drag this out if you're unsure right? If this is halfway, you know, you can always take this length and then just drag it down another length and then be like, okay, that's where my pelvis is. Here, divide this in half, your pillar of the knee, but I'm actually going to be drawing the legs a little bit different. I'm just going to mark this here. Then here we have the, the legs and these tend to be a little bit thicker as well for anime girls, unless you want to draw very um, thin character, then it's very twig-like. And a lot of the time in anime, they tend to lift the feet up, so it looks like she's wearing high heels, and that makes her legs look a little bit longer. This is why girls wear high heels, even though it's very uncomfortable. So here we can imply the kneecaps. And then we can kind of imply the arms. Now, I'm actually going to lengthen the arms now because now it looks a little bit too short. All you can really do is just drag it down. And there we have an anime figure, figure, right? We can always add a little bit of more dimension, right? Like, you know, adding a neck. Filling out the chest area. Kind of just roughing in the other parts of the body. Add in the belly button. And there we have the comparison. Can I, you know, squish this even more? Of course I can. Um, in fact, I would, but for the sake of this video being kind of shorter, um, it's just going to be like this. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope this helped a bunch. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.